Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the 17th President of the Republic of the Philippines, Ferdinand Ara Marcos Jr., together with the First Lady, Luis Araneta Marcos. Excellencies, Distinguished guests, the President of the Republic of the Philippines, Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency, R. Charles Brown, the Papal Nuncio to the Philippines and the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps. The distinguished members, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, may I say the ladies of the Diplomatic Corps have uh, put a new spin on our national costume. And uh, I think with the help of some of our local designers have created a wonderful uh, spectacle. So the gentlemen of the Diplomatic Corps, we're going to have to pick up our game. I'm going to go after this evening, make sure that uh, uh, we too can preen like peacocks, like uh, the ladies this evening. First Lady uh, Luis Araneta Marcos, Senate President uh, Juan Miguel Subiri, House Speaker, Speaker Martin Romualdez, the Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Ricky Manalo, my fellow colleagues in government, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am uh, honored to welcome you all today to celebrate the 125th anniversary of the Declaration of Philippine Independence. This is a momentous occasion that marks our nation's unwavering spirit and resilience amidst adversity. The road to our independence was one that was long, perilous, and one that asked for the ultimate sacrifice of our forebears. We remember our National Day every year with a sense of gratitude to the men and the women that ushered our country the hard, into our country, the hard-fought freedom from the clutches of tyranny and colonialism. Truly, the Philippines has gone a long way on a sovereign, as a sovereign state, as a member of the international community since its birth as the first republic of Asia in 1898. Our country has since stood shoulder to shoulder with many countries on many circumstances in war, in peace, and has built, down the road, has built down the road strong ties with many nations over the years in pursuit of our national interests. We have been at the forefront, either as a lead or as a proponent, in the global discourse supporting peace and security, social and gender equity, migration, climate change, and other consequential issues in the global agenda. Guided by our independent foreign policy, we continue to conduct our external affairs with national interest as the primordial guide. Our decisions will be grounded on what we determine is best for our people and for our country. We uphold respect and dignity in our dealings with other countries and expect the same and have been, have received the same from all other countries. We engage everyone. We are friends to all and enemy to none. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today's celebration has taken a whole new different meaning as we mark this occasion with renewed hopes and spirited resolve to rise anew as a nation, not from political oppression, but from economic scarring and gendered by the crippling and lingering effect of a pandemic. That is why, as a way to honor our forebears, it is my duty as president to keep this house in order and to steer the country to a high growth path whose effect will be felt each and every ordinary one. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we hoist the Philippine flag on this occasion, we hoist it with the same dignity and pride as it was first unfurled 125 years ago in Kawit, Cavite. May this year's celebration and commemoration of the 125th Independence Day be a continuing reminder to us Filipinos that it is only in unity and solidarity as a nation that we will be able to safeguard the freedom won by our ancestors. As we look back on our storied past, let us not forget to gaze upon the horizon where the promise of a brighter future awaits. It is our shared responsibility to foster a society that upholds democracy, social justice, inclusivity, so that every Filipino can flourish and contribute to our nation's growth. From where our country stands now, we recognize the challenges will continue to test our mettle as a nation. But with unity and solidarity of the Filipino people, we can endure even another 125 years with our heads held high. I ask you all to join me in a toast to our friends from the diplomatic community. May we continue to strengthen the ties that bind our countries and peoples together. Always look for ways to take 
our relations to new heights. Our colleagues in government and partners from the private sector continue to draw inspiration from the courage and determination that our ancestors, uh, of our ancestors as we work hand in hand to better the lot of every Filipino. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, mabuhay po kayo, mabuhay ang Pilipinas, mabuhay ang Pilipino. Your Excellency, it is my honor and privilege this evening to express to Your Excellency, Mr. President, as the Republic of the Philippines celebrates the anniversary of the proclamation of its independence. That moment in 1898 of the declaration written in Spanish that the people of todas estas islas filipinas son e tienen el derecho de ser libres e independientes, which is to say that all the people of the Philippines are and have the right to be free and independent. That dream, that noble aspiration proclaimed on this very day in 1898 would take 48 years, almost half a century, to become a full reality as it did in July of 1946. That long process which resulted in the recognition of the full sovereignty and independence of the Philippines tells us something about the character of the Filipino nation, the dedication, resilience, perseverance of the Filipino people. These are qualities which continue to distinguish Filipinos throughout the world in our own time. After 77 years of the exercise of full sovereignty, the challenge posed by the 1898 Proclamation of Independence, the dual challenge of freedom and independence is as significant as ever. The challenge of freedom, as you, Mr. President, mentioned in your speech this morning, which implies the creation of a society in which each person, every citizen, is free to grow and to flourish and is not constrained or limited by structures of injustice or exclusion. Freedom, of course, does not imply limitless individual autonomy. It does not mean that one is free to act in ways counter to the rights of other citizens or counter to the common good. But it certainly means that every person should have the possibility of seeking in their own particular way to realize their God-given pot potential, life, and happiness. And then there is the challenge of independence especially in the current geopolitical context marked by increasing tension, polarization, and even sadly military conflict. As Your Excellency stated in your speech to the General Assembly of the United Nations last year, what is necessary in such a context is an open, inclusive, and rules-based international order governed by international law and informed by the principles of equity and of justice. That is to say, an international order which seeks the resolution of potential conflicts by means of principles which are applied equally to everyone. The Philippines has been admirable in this regard, and as a result, in the international context, to quote again from Your Excellency's speech at the United Nations last September, and repeat it again this evening, the Philippines shows itself to be a friend to all and an enemy of none. And so, Your Excellency, it is an honor for me to express, on behalf of all the members of the diplomatic corps, our heartfelt congratulations and best wishes on this, the 125th anniversary of the proclamation of the independence of the Philippines. Now, dear friends, may I ask all of you to join me in a toast. To the President of the Republic of the Philippines, His Excellency Ferdinand R. Marcos, Jr., for his well-being, health, and success, and for the peace, prosperity, and happiness of the Filipino nation. May God bless the Philippines. Mabuhay. Mabuhay. Cheers. Mabuhay. Thank you, Most Reverend Charles John Brown III. And thank you, Mr. President.